Hey, it's Rick Kettner here, and today I'm gonna go through the five books that I read in July 2022. And as usual, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I chose to read these particular books and what you can expect to get out of them. That way you can decide whether or not they are right for you. Let's begin with book number one, The YouTube Formula, How Anyone Can Unlock the Algorithm to Drive Views, Build an Audience, and Grow Revenue by Daryl Eaves. This book is about how to become a successful content creator on YouTube. It covers everything from how to start your very first channel and why you might want to do so, all the way to more advanced strategies for how to have your content perform as well as possible on the platform. Now, personally, I've been publishing videos here under my own name on YouTube for a little over two years at this point. Prior to that, I had co-founded a number of music educational companies, three different brands in the music educational space that each have their own channel. And since founding those companies, they've gone on to bring on millions of subscribers. Personally, my history is more geared around content marketing and traditional search engine optimization with platforms like Google. So I've never really taken the time to dive into truly understanding how YouTube works, what makes it different than other search engines and other content platforms, and more specifically, how to make sure that my content is reaching the largest possible audience and to make sure that I'm actually serving viewers as well as possible. So that was my primary motivation in picking up a copy of this book. Now, I will say I was somewhat annoyed in the early half of the book because a lot of the content really just focused on why you should start a YouTube channel and really selling the idea of getting on YouTube to people that might just be considering whether or not they should start a YouTube channel. So a lot of the early content of the book was just explaining the benefits of being on YouTube, the many ways of making money on YouTube. And of course, all of those things can be very interesting to someone who is kind of in that decision phase. For me, most of the value is in the second half of the book where the author dove into more specifics on exactly how to make sure that you're reaching the largest possible audience and the different factors and considerations one needs to make when creating content because there are a variety of algorithms. There's the search engine, there's the recommendation system. There are all kinds of different ways to be successful on the platform and it's important to understand what your strategy is and how to really optimize. And there are many different ways to actually be successful on the platform. But again, whether you're starting a brand new channel, whether you're just deciding whether YouTube is right or wrong for you, or if you're in my position where you already have happy on the platform, but you want to take things to that next level, in any of those situations, I recommend that you consider reading The YouTube Formula by Daryl Eaves. Next up, we have The Business of Belonging, How to Make Community Your Competitive Advantage by David Spinks. This book is about how businesses can benefit from building community and how by doing so, they can establish a strong and scalable competitive advantage because while rival brands can always emulate your products or your services, it's much more difficult for them to recreate community and the many relationships and connections within an established community. Now, the book tackles all kinds of different reasons why you might be interested in building a community around your business. So some of the most popular examples include increasing word of mouth referrals gathering useful feedback from your customers and offsetting support costs. Because of course, if you bring more of your customers together, they can help solve issues for each other. They can help spread the word about your products and services. And of course, as a business, you can observe all of this and gather that feedback and make improvements to your products and services over time. Now, if you're brand new to building a community, the book covers some very powerful frameworks and mental models for how to think about building and establishing a community. For example, there's the community investment journey, which talks about what to do and what to expect at various stages of building a brand new community. And there's the social identity cycle, which talks about how brand new members join your community and develop and mature as they become more invested in your particular community. And then there's just a lot of advice and tips around understanding various levels of engagement from members and how to reward your most loyal members, your power users, the people that in many ways are the lifeblood of your community. 
Now, while much of the book is focused on helping well-established businesses either build a brand new community or grow an existing community, the tips and the advice can easily be applied to almost any situation in which you want to bring people together, create connections, create relationships for some kind of a business outcome or goal. So whether you have an existing business or you're looking to build a community to help you launch a new business, this book can help. So if you're interested, like me, in the power of community, consider reading The Business of Belonging by David Spinks. Next up, we have Humor Seriously, why humor is a secret weapon in business and life and how anyone can harness it, even you, by Jennifer Aker and Naomi Begdonis. This book was on my 2022 reading list as one of the top 10 books I was most excited to read over the course of this year. The book is about how to introduce more humor into your work or into your workplace. And my interest in reading this book primarily revolved around wanting to make these videos more engaging and entertaining. And what I find is that in my personal life, I'm much more likely to be funny or to use dry humor here and there, whereas in these videos, I'm typically really focused on just delivering information. And so that humor and that entertainment factor just doesn't really translate over. And so I picked up a copy of this book primarily out of an interest in closing that gap and being more myself in these videos. Now, I will say, I don't think the book really tackled that topic as directly as I would have liked, but the book does cover a lot of different subjects, some tips and some advice, that I do think is pretty useful and relevant. So for example, the book covered some tips from world-class comedians in terms of how to be more funny. It also talked about how to recover from a misstep in the case that you deliver a joke that either doesn't land or for in some cases might create a situation where your joke comes across as insensitive and how to correct for that and how to recover. And the book also really focuses just overall on the many benefits of introducing humor into the workplace. And so rather than focusing on content creators like myself, the book's a little bit more geared towards people that work with a variety of other people. They go into the office. They want to create a more relaxed, comfortable atmosphere. They want to create connections. They want to connect with people on a deeper level. It's more geared towards introducing humor into the workplace than into content that you might be creating. For example, in my situation where I'm filming videos like this. But again, a lot of the information can be translated over. It's still very helpful. And I did very much enjoy reading the book. Now, oddly enough, my favorite part of the book was the afterword in which the authors of this book had a conversation with famous author Michael Lewis and got his take on not only the ideas from this book, but just how to think about humor within daily life. And I found that section particularly inspiring and very practical. And of course, it was very much built on the foundation outlined from this book, but I found Lewis's perspective rather inspiring and just very down to earth and practical. So anyway, if, like me, you're interested in incorporating humor into your work or into your workplace, consider reading Humor Seriously by Jennifer Aker and Naomi Bagdonis. Next up, we have The Gift of Failure, How the Best Parents Learn to Let Go So Their Children Can Succeed by Jessica Leahy. This book is about the value of freeing children to make choices, experience failure, and ultimately learn from their own mistakes. It covers practical tips on how to strike a better balance between, on the one hand, providing kids with a clear sense of autonomy, and yet on the other hand, setting clear boundaries and expectations. One of the core themes in the book is the idea of autonomous parenting, in which we provide a supportive environment and yet provide kids with a chance to make more choices and to take on greater responsibility as they get older. Now, the author draws a very clear distinction between autonomous parenting and the idea of permissive parenting. With permissive parenting, parents tend to be very nurturing, but they're also very reluctant to impose any limits 
or structure or boundaries on their children. Now, another recurring message in the book is the overprotective nature of modern parents and how many parents today are falling into the trap of trying to protect their children from perceived threats and negative experiences. And the author explains how many of these risks are vastly overblown and thus parents end up trying to protect their kids from situations that are highly unlikely to ever happen. And in the process, they end up sacrificing opportunities for their children to develop independence and resilience. Now, one of my favorite things about this book is how the author is both a teacher and a parent, and therefore she's uniquely qualified to understand the capabilities of children at different age groups. And so throughout the book, she would mention how parents routinely underestimate the capabilities of their children. And she goes on to explain what you can expect from your kids at different age groups and at different milestones throughout life. For example, as they progress through the traditional school system. But anyway, if like me, you're interested in understanding how to provide your kids with greater autonomy and how to allow them to learn and grow by making choices and experiencing failure and learning from their mistakes, consider reading The Gift of Failure by Jessica Leahy. Next up, we have Future Proof, Nine Rules for Humans in the Age of Automation by Kevin Roos. This book is about how to live a better life in the age of automation and artificial intelligence. It explores the many concerns that people have, both real and imagined, about emerging technologies. And it talks about very practical things that we can do to be better prepared for a rapidly changing world. Now, if the book looks and sounds familiar, that's because this isn't my first time reading the book. I first went through the audio version about a year ago, and I've recommended it in in a number of videos here on my channel. This time around, I decided to go through the digital version so I could really study the content more closely and make some highlights and take some notes. One of the things that I most appreciate about this book is how the author doesn't really take either of the extreme positions in the ongoing debate about automation and AI. So he doesn't take the view that this is going to make the world dramatically worse and that we're gonna somehow enter some doomsday scenario, nor does he see this as leading to some kind of utopia where the world is just going to inherently get better and better because of artificial intelligence. Instead, he really focuses on the practical practical everyday concerns and the way that automation and AI are already affecting the economy and affecting the way that we work, and in some cases, how it is already disrupting many industries and many jobs out there. And he goes on to explain how these trends are likely to continue and the things that we can expect in the future. One of my favorite takeaways from the book is the idea that we should not be trying to compete with artificial intelligence on its own terms. In other words, we shouldn't be trying to do things that computers are already uniquely really strong at doing. Instead, we should focus on strengthening our uniquely human capabilities, the things that we are best at doing. And often cases, these are things that computers really struggle to do. Now, of course, much of the advice in this book is really focused around how we work and how we create value in the world, but it also tackles some other related topics, including our growing reliance on technology, things like technology addiction when it comes to social media or things like this, and also our increasing reliance on recommendation engines, whether it's Spotify recommending music, Amazon recommending products, Google Maps recommending the most efficient route to get from one destination to another. Whatever the case may be, a lot of these services are slowly morphing over time where previously in the past, they would help us find the things that we would already appreciate. They're really geared towards convenience, helping us find the product that we want, the music that we would like. Whereas today, increasingly, they're actually guiding our behavior and guiding our preferences, causing us to buy things we wouldn't normally have been interested in or to listen the music and to actually like music that without the recommendations, without the algorithms behind them, we might not have actually appreciated. We might not have sought out. And so computers in many ways are actually influencing our preferences and guiding our choices. And in some ways, this really takes away from our humanity and makes us less individual and causes us more to conform with societal norms or just what the computer or the algorithm is dictating. So anyway, just a really fascinating book and one that I highly recommend if you want to understand the present day reality and the future 
future reality of automation and artificial intelligence. In either case, I recommend that you read Future Proof by Kevin Roos. Anyway, those are the five books that I enjoyed in July 2022. Click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want more updates like this again in the future.